Hello beautiful people, welcome to Global Happiness today. It's another Monday, it's another sit at home. You know, Nietzsche, um, Anambra, Imo, and some places, there's all, they have already been um, 80% co compliance as at the time of filing this report. But as we speak, Asar de Kubo have decided to open up a lot of conquer worms, said quite a lot. And in subsequent video, we're going to give you updates on what is happening, uh, where uh, Wazirike Chiflafu Wazirike Tako, the issue of Mazin Namdekano, IPOB, Simon Ekba, and Asari Dekobo. Quite a lot of juicy information they give out there. But let's quickly go into the news. It's quite, we're going to drop two of um, Asari Dekobo's news into one. He said quite a lot. You'll be the judge eventually. Before we do so, like and subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. Beside it, you see a bell notification icon. Please go ahead, click on it to get notified as soon as we update our channel on YouTube. While the leader of the Niger Delta People's Salvation Force, NDPSF, Mujahid Asari Dokubo, has stated that inhabitants of Southeast respect the indigenous people of Biafra, that's IPOB sit at home order, because they are afraid of being brought down. According to Dokubo, who spoke during if a live session on Sunday, January 30th, IPOB leader Mazen Nandekano has been responsible for the shutting down of schools and businesses in Southeast, as well as wreaking havoc throughout the region. IPOB said Igbo people should not go about their business, they should not go to school. So if we Igbos no longer go about our business and go to school, what else should, be, should we be doing? That's why all these boys are going into fraud, Dokubo said. The former Niger Delta militant leader described the pro Biafran group of being a satanic movement, adding that its members are cannibals. He said in a quote, IPOB is worse than a terrorist organization. It is a satanic movement. They tell them to come against humans and they do it and eat. If people sit at home, it, it, is, that, it is that they are afraid of you people. It is not because you are powerful. They don't know you people are nothing. People are afraid of being brought down. That's why they, are, they have continued to sit at home. Not because they love Namdekano. Why is there no sit at home in Port Harcourt, Calabar, Uyo? It is because the government of these places are saying, don't ever come here. Very soon, Igbos will come out and say, it is okay. Our old women are starving. They can't go to farm. Market at Tunisia Market, people are afraid of doing businesses because they are afraid and scared of being brought down. In addition, Asari Dokubo denied any involvement in the process that resulted in Kanu's extradition. I don't know where Namdi Kanu was living. I don't even know where he took off from. They said I was the person who gave him up. You accuse me of betrayer. I am not a member of your organization. We are enemies. What do enemies do? They fight and bring down each other until there is a platform for reconciliation, the former militant leader said. In another news, still on the same issue of um, uh, Asari Dokobo, said quite a lot. Here he said, and I'll quote, I'll quote him very quickly, Asari Dokobo faulted IPB for saying he was behind the reported extradition of his leader from Kenya. Both Asari Dokobo and King Kano have been at the forefront of the struggle for the actualization of Biafra. The PS started on a relatively good note, but along the line they turned into enemies, despite pushing for the same cause. Amid the ensuing face of some prominent figures formerly, no, lo, formerly loyal to Kano have switched camp for the Kubo's Biafran customary government. For instance, Kano's former deputy, Uche Mefo, is now BCG's head of information and communication. In October 2020, Asari Dokubo claimed that the IPB leader had derailed the Biafran struggle. He claimed with Kano there's no hope for Biafra, stressing that he was not representing the interests of other tribes under Biafra. In one of the landmark altercations, Asari Dokubo in June 2020 challenged Kano to swear if he had not been collecting money from governors and Igbo businessmen in the name of IPOB. Responding, Kano accused the former Niger Delta militant of collecting 20 million from him in 2016. That's 20 million naira. Adding that the money belonged to IPOB and challenged Asari Dokubo to swear on the Quran to deny the allegation. At the time, Asari Dokubo vowed 
that nothing could make him ever work with the indigenous people by Biafran leader on the Biafran project again, alleging that he was promoting religious intolerance against non-followers of Judaism, a religion Kano has insisted is the region of Igbo people. Speaking on Sunday during his live uh, social media live program, Asai Dokubo said IPOB and I was the one that sold them out. Okay, I take that again. Asai Dokubo said IPOB said I was the one that sold them out, that I betrayed them. I'm not the one who said it. They are, they are also the one that said I betrayed the leader in Kenya. I don't know where Kano, Mazin and the Kano was living. I don't know where he took off from. Took off to. They said I was the person who gave him up. I now said I was the person. The next thing they said was, I saw the Kubo was the person. Look at this idiot. What are you going to do to me? He further combated the group for being responsible for the constant closure of businesses in the Southeast region as a result of the sit at home order. He said IPOB was presented as as a platform for reconciliation, but today it is not fighting for BFR. Today, schools, businesses have been closed down. If people sit at home, it is their choice that they are afraid of you people. It is not because you people are powerful. They don't know you people are nothing. People are afraid of being brought down. That's why they have continued to sit at home. Not because they love Namdekami. If there's adequate security by the government, why is there no city that to be in Portacot, Calabar, and you? It is because the government of these places we are saying they don't ever come here. Very soon, it will come out and say it is okay. Our old men are starving. Our old men are starving. They can't go to the farms and market at Tunisia. Market, people are full of doing businesses because they are scared of being brought down. This is a story they could be talking. And he's actually blamed very hard. A lot of people are expecting that by now, whatever in the field, that is existing between Asari the Kubo, the indigenous people of Biafra, and those agitating for Biafra would at least come to a heady end, at least. Let there be peace inside. Of course, the lives of Wazduruki have spoken in a very lengthy video, which we're going to allow you to watch in the next video, not this one. It was quite a lengthy one. It is said extensively, spoke extensively on Asari the Kubo, you know, so the spoke extensively about what is happening the issue of Mazin and the Kano and the issue of IPB Simone Park, which said quite a lot. Honestly, this is uh, becoming um, very uneasy. I feel that at this rate, whatever the issues is, this is actually sudden as actually at loggerhead. Some of them are accusing one another over the issue of uh, money, uh, misappropriation, uh, misappropriation of funds. But be that as it may, lives are involved here. Whatever it is, let it be resolved amicably. And let's see how we can move on uh, with our various lives. Let's go to wrap it up. Let's meet in our comment section, please. What's a take? Do have a nice